everyone, Katerina here. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm going to show you how I made this really nice autumnal theme card. Now this card was made to accompany the ATC cards I made before for my first ever ATC swap and I will link to that video in the description box below because that is the video where I already shared how I made all the lovely embellishments I will be using on this card also. So to make the card, I'm using the latest, well, number 48 Paper Craft Society box, the latest to me, uh, by Textures, and the Paper Craft, Simply Cards and Paper Craft magazine issue 220. It is a bit of an older magazine, but has that gorgeous autumnal theme stamp set. So the card base measures 7 by 7 inches, and the brown cardstock I used is from the Lidl range. Six and three quarters square are the measurements for this gold piece of cardstock and a white piece of cardstock I cut to six and a half by six and a half inches and I wanted to add a bit of a texture to this so you will be able to pick up it in here on camera a bit. I added this piece of cardstock diagonally into my scoreboard and I scored down at quarter of an inch and one eighth of an inch and then uh, turned it the other way diagonally and scored it down again using those measurements and I created this gorgeous like a plot looking background in there which I absolutely loved. I couldn't find any uh, embossing folder in my uh, stash that I liked or was this size. I think I only have one embossing folder that is big like this. So um, I, using the scoreboard to create texture on my cards is definitely my go-to techniques. I decided to make my card into a top folding card and I glued my mirror cardstock on top of that brown card base. I'm not going to glue the white one down yet because I will add some color to it later. So this lovely branch uh, shape die uh, is what I used to create out all these bits and pieces and the cardstock that I used was just plain brown just like that bottom one in there that you can see on the picture now and I took all of those brown ones and I added some color to them just like these two and I did that by using my favorite ever technique heat embossing. So I'm going to take the last two that I have in here and I'm going to show you how I turned them into those lovely, shiny, magical pieces. I love heat embossing. So the first embossing powder that I used is the Turkish Coffee by WOW. And it's going to make it really nice and dark and shiny. And the other one I used for a contrast is the tarnished brass. This will be much lighter in color, almost like a goldy brassy kind of a shine to it. I absolutely love the contrast of these two. You will see how lovely they just go together. So now I'm going to heat set them both using my WOW heat tool, which has two settings and I like to use the higher setting to be honest in my projects. I'm just a bit impatient. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to create a wreath shape using these branches on my card. When I saw the unboxing of this Paper Craft Society box, I fell in love with it instantly. And Lou mentioned that these were designed so you could create a wreath with them. And I could not wait to try it when I received my lovely box. Now I'm going to show you how I added some color to these leaves die cut using dies from the Paper Craft Society box. I'm just laying two different shades of the green down here, adding some water and the leaf is cut out of watercolor cardstock so it can take water very well um, and I'm gonna come back with a little bit of a darker shade of green and it creates a lovely dimensional almost look to these leaves because you can pick up on all the different colors or the shades in there and you can mix much different colors in here too it doesn't have to be all green uh, I normally like to let these air dry but for the sake of this video I uh, blasted it with my heat tool just to speed the process up a bit now in here, I'm just trying to arrange my uh, goodies. <laughs> these are watercolor, and I shared the mediums that I used for coloring these in, in my previous video, which is linked in the description box below. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, so now I'm arranging the bits and goodies, and it takes me quite a while in here. So I cut out that part of the video. And because I'm using that bow, I wanted to bring that kind of a color into this. So I tried and the ripe persimmon from Distress Oxide range looked just perfect. 
I'm going in with a lighter layer in here, but I will come back later and I will go a bit heavier handed uh, adding this color onto the edges of this card. I love using colors for autumn theme projects. I think uh, autumn is beautiful, abundant in colors, and I want to bring that onto my card as well. So I'm adding some of the dry persimmon onto my uh, leaves that I had ink smooched before, so similarly to the green one I just showed you. And once I checked it against my embellishments, I decided that it definitely needs a heavier layer, layer of that dry persimmon in there in all four sides and all four corners. But I will come back later, you'll see, to fix this up a little bit. So now I'm going to attach this to my mirror cardstock. I remove the backing of the double-sided tape layer it up as evenly as I can and this will leave me with that lovely shiny border on all four sides to this cardstock. Once I start to arrange this wreath in here I realize that that square whiteness just does not go with my round shape wreath so I come back and I keep coming back with a little bit more of that color to soften those corners a little bit make them more into like a round shape. Now it almost looks like there's a glow all around my wreath and this is the look that I absolutely adore. Now I don't normally sit down to make cards that I have absolutely no plan for in my head. This one was definitely one of those. I just I knew what I wanted to use but how I absolutely no clue. So uh, you will see the process in here me uh, going and changing my mind and now I'm using all these different branches and I'm just alternating the colors. I'm attaching these to my card using hot glue and just dots here and there. I'm not adding glue to every piece, every part of these branches. I'm kind of letting them loose if you like. It's well attached to the card because of the hot glue dots but it's not completely flattened down. There's a lovely texture to it. I'm just really taking advantage of the textures that heat embossing already left me with and I'm using using that to add some dimension to this card. And as you can see, I didn't need to use any stencils to make this lovely wreath shape. The shape of those branches really nicely guides you on how to create this lovely wreath. Now I'm trying to attach my embellishments, but not before I had to tidy up a little bit of a dripping hot glue there on the base of my card. So this pumpkin set is stunning. I really enjoyed coloring it in and I'm adding foam pads to the back of it to the bits that is not going to touch the branches because I will be adding hot glue to that bit but I'm not gluing it down just yet against my cardstock because I want to fill out that background a little bit and I'm adding again using hot glue just to the base of those uh, foliage and all the different things that I'm going to be using. I'm not gluing everything down flat against my cardstock. I'm just adding a little bit of glue to make sure they are well attached but still sitting nice and loose in there a bit. So these foliages that you can see, the berry-like ones, are from the Simply Cards and Paper Craft magazine stamp set and I used water colouring to colour those in too. sentiment I chose a stamp from the Simply Cards and Paper Craft magazine stamp set and this one says Autumn Blessings. I'm stamping it out with black Versafine ink um, and I'm just waiting a little second in there just to make sure all that ink transfers to my cardstock and I'm using the embossing powder one of the ones that I used for my branches and this one is a Turkish coffee and I'm just going to heat set it. Uh, when you use your heat tool, 
I'm sure you've heard this said so many times, but it's nice to be reminded, let it heat up properly before you set it over to your cardstock. You can avoid a lot of warping or burning your card as well. I am going to use one of my oval dies to cut this sentiment out. You can also see some flowers here uh, up on the top left corner, which I created plenty of, but then I decided against. I didn't think that they added anything to this card. Once my sentiment is done, I cut, I decide to add a little bit of a color to the edges and I'm using that same ink I used on the card, uh, on the edges of the card. So this is the right persimmon and it will lift it nicely away from that background. It um, kind of separates it from it a little bit, which I absolutely love. And I just decide to glue this down flat against my cardstock using my collal glue. It's a nice strong glue, all-purpose glue, and I love using it. It's solvent-based and it does not warp my cardstock at all. To add a little bit of a bling, I pull out a couple of my bling boxes from Chloe's Creative Cards and I'm choosing colors and I decide to go with these darker green ones from the Festive Fences collection and I will not add them to the corner of my card. I thought it was just too much. I think adding them uh, on either side of the sentiment just added a lovely interest to this card. It was still missing something for me, perhaps a little bit of color here on the front of the card, so I decided to add some mushrooms on either side of the pumpkins. Brown ones go to the left side and a couple of the red ones onto the right side in here. And again just used my hot glue and now I'm much much happier with it. However, of course, it wouldn't be my card if I didn't add some glitter. So I'm just going around the wreath and I'm adding it randomly here and there at my quick quick grab glue it's a dry clear glue so once it dries properly it will leave me with that lovely shine of the glitter but none of the whiteness of the glue will show so it just adds a lovely sparkle to those cards and the glitter i'm using is the chunky crystallina by chloe's creative cards and now i'm gonna come back with some more of that glue and i'm just dotting it on every single one of those berries on the lovely gorgeous plant in there and this time I'm coming in with the fine crystalline and I'm just scattering it all over and I'm tapping the excess off and this is the lovely card is ready so you can see a lovely close-up in here in much better lighting when you can pick up on all the lovely background as well as I scored those lines diagonally just looks stunning it really adds so much to this card I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and if you did please give me the thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share the cards if you like them because every single interaction helps me so much and I really truly am grateful for every single one of you for all the comments and likes they really mean the world to me I will be back very soon with another video until then bye